Lyrical Opera Theater proudly presents... Hi, welcome to another edition of Lyrical Logs. We're here today in the Midvale Performing Arts Center and we have a very special panel of guests today. We have Bob Bedore, who is the Vice President of the Midvale Arts Council. We have Sophia Haas Tingey, who is a mayoral candidate for Midvale City. And we have Crystal Young Otterstrom, who is the Executive Director of the Utah Cultural Alliance. And we're here talking about how the performing arts benefit communities. And Crystal, our first question is going to you. Okay. Can you tell us about the Utah Cultural Alliance? Sure, uh, we are the advocacy voice for arts and humanities in the state uh, and cultural businesses as well. Advocacy for us is twofold. So one half is advocating for arts and humanities to government and then the other half is advocating to arts and humanities to the general public, letting everyone know in Utah what is so wonderful about our cultural sector. Cool. And um, how do performing arts benefit individuals? There are so many <laughs> levels. <laughs> it's hard to pick them so all. So many levels, right? But a, a, a couple that I'll throw out there that I think are important is, first of all, quality of life is very important. I mean, it adds being able to enjoy many different things in your life, not doing the same thing, getting outside of your box, seeing through someone else's shoes, those all bring benefit to your own daily life. It also helps with creativity, even if you yourself are not a performing artist or not a writer or not something, by just experiencing it, you can be exposed to more creativity and that helps you in all sectors of your life. I mean, even if you have zero professional connection with arts and humanities, having that creativity in your life can benefit you in any work sector, any job that you're doing. And then of course, you know, there's all the benefits for children and education. And then of course, the economic benefit that performing arts and humanities and all of the arts bring to communities. Great, thank you. Um, Bob, yes. we understand that this historic building has some plans for its renovations. Can you tell us about those plans? Right, well, we're working on taking the Midvale Performing Arts Center, and uh, it, it's been a great location for us, and we've updated the seats and things, but we want to make it more of a true theater, uh, and by doing that, there are plans in to bring in more of a stadium seating kind of environment, better use of our dressing rooms, the actual stage, lighting, which has always been a, a real hit and miss thing for this location. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea of turning this into not just a great looking outside building, but a, an actual theater that people can use. And there are plans also uh, for uh, working with our amphitheater and making that a different experience as well. So we're trying to do what we can to, to give different experiences through theater. Uh, and not only, you know, I talk theater, but that's also gets used by dance and by uh, you know the orchestras and, and things like that mm -hmm. so we're trying to do what we can to to really bring a true experience awesome and um, what is the Midvale Arts Council doing to raise funds for the renovations we're doing pretty much everything we can everything. <laughs> passing <laughs> around uh, cans around at concerts um, no, but, but videos. A, a lot of it's through grants. Uh, uh -huh. Murray recently uh, did a, a huge update on their amphitheater uh, through a grant. Uh, we're now pursuing uh, the same sort of grant there. We've brought on a new executive director, Daniel Daniels. Daniel Daniels. That is his name twice. <laughs> I know, and, I asked uh, him why he has two first names. <laughs> and uh, with that, he, he is uh, he's very proficient in grant writing. We're really hoping that we can up that. Uh, and also, it's really a lot through just kind donations and people coming and supporting the arts that we do. Thank you. Um, Sophia, congratulations first of all um, on making it to the uh, primary or uh, to, to the final ballot for Midvale City Mayor. Um, do you have additional information about what Midvale City is doing to fund the reno renovations? Well, essentially, <clears throat> Midvale uh, would be funding the Performing Arts Center through what's known as the Capital Improvement uh, Project or, or Plans. Uh, this is money that cities are, are kind of, they have to spend every year as they have funds available to improve the community look, the feel, the services, uh, the infrastructure within the city. Mm -hmm. uh, so this year at the latest budget retreat, the 
the Midville City actually looked at the projects and the they decided they were going to go with a, a new community center uh, refit mm. this year. But immediately below that on the list is the actual funding of building out the Performing Arts Center. How wonderful, yay! Yeah. Now the, the, the issue on the yeah. other hand is, is the amount of money that they projected that this is going to cost, which is about $650,000. So there's not quite enough money in this year's budget to include that, but if the city manages its funds well over the next couple of years, while still making sure we provide services to the people that are needed, Probably within the next couple of years, we should be able to fund it as long as we keep this to the top of our list. Wonderful. Um, Crystal, can you give us some examples of the economic impact of cultural businesses in Utah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so every five years, Americans for the Arts does a study called Arts and Economic Prosperity, and communities can uh, participate, can buy into project and three Utah communities participated this year so we have Logan Salt Lake City and Iron County oh as a whole and collectively uh, those three communities alone are bringing well over 50 million dollars in economic activity to Whoa. the state uh, those three communities uh, employ um, I recall it being around 20 to 30,000 full-time jobs, just those three oh communities. My Statewide, uh, the Creative Vitality Index is economic data compiled by WESTAF, which is the Western States Arts Federation, and that says that uh, the cultural community brings at least 51,000 jobs to that the state. Amazing. So, so the economic uh, impact is huge. huge, and that's just the organizations themselves. Now, of course, as people come to events, as they come to maybe performances at a lyric opera theater, or if they go to an exhibit at a gallery or a museum, they also are often spending money in their communities as well. So they're buying a parking ticket, they might go out to dinner, or they may be paying for a babysitter. There's a lot of things that go into that dollar amount that they're spending, especially a tourism-focused place like Iron County with its Shakespeare Festival. Um, so that study also measures what amounts of money people are spending in addition to their concert ticket. And it is significant, significant. Wow. yes. And especially in a tourism community like Iron County, uh, those people are spending on average around $150 a person in addition to each of their concert oh, tickets. My so goodness. It's, it's significant, it's important. Wow, cool. All right, Sophia, um, we've heard that you have plans for a Midvale Arts District. Can you tell us what your vision of that is? Absolutely. So when we are looking at Midvale, uh, people, a lot of people look at Main Street not only as a historical center, but it has also historically been a gathering place where they can come and, and spend time with each other, with other people, uh, also do fun events and commerce together. <clears throat> The, um, we do also do not have an arts district in Midville. Mm -hmm. However, with the Performing Arts Center being very close to, to Main Street, mm -hmm. with the Midville Main Street Theater also being there, and also with the history, the film history on Main Street that the residents are very proud of, we actually have basically the seeds uh, of being able to lift it up and create an arts district out of Main Street. Uh, I mean, obviously I want to definitely invest in getting the Performing Arts Center. This will be probably one of the very few, if not the only, place we can go down to like a suburban, intra-urban city that's actually going to have a fairly nice looking Performing Arts Center at, at there. Also with the uh, Community Development Agency and uh, helping provide low-cost loans, we can help improve like the uh, Main Street Theater uh, on Main Street. Um, I also have an invitation out to the Utah Film Commission to come to our street, put a um, museum there, a film museum, oh, right there on Main awesome. Street. And so I would also want to not just be an arts district, but to be a multicultural arts district. And so I'm also looking for uh, businesses, especially like restaurants that want to come in and put a, you know, a multicultural type restaurant, maybe like a Greek hamburger place or something else. And, and I'm not looking for chains, I'm actually looking for businesses that want to create a unique cultural atmosphere. So I believe that once we get those particular businesses in the area, the things will really start taking off. And you will now have the opportunity for 
basically your, your coffee and pastry shops that would want to come in to, to service these kinds of customers that want to come to this particular area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my long-term vision is to actually be able to shut down Main Street one day a year oh. to have a Main Street, a Midville Main Street Multicultural Arts Festival. How so if you fun. want to be on that committee, make sure you contact me. Yay! I love <laughs> that <laughs> idea. <laughs> wow, cool. All right, Bob, could you tell us how a vibrant arts district um, would benefit the city? Well, well, these two have covered a lot of the elements of it. I mean, not only is it businesses that come in, but a uh, vibrant arts community turns um, in, into a destination location. You're, mm. you're going to go there because sure. you know something is going on. Um, and, and just restaurants can't survive just restaurants. You know, mm -hmm. they, they need something to go around. To pull people in. Right. But, but an arts community gives a, uh, an identity to, mm -hmm. to a location. I mean, I'm, I'm going to throw out uh, Hale Center Theater. They've gone from South Salt Lake to West Jordan to now they're going to be going to Sandy. But those cities are fighting to bring, to them, bring in. them in. Yes. It's not just because they love theater. They know what it does. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I'd like to point out is the, the sort, of, uh, sort of hidden thing that comes from it. Um, here with the Midville Arts Council, we do a lot of outreach programs. We get into the schools mm. and we try to teach arts of various kinds. And it's not because we think we're going to necessarily bring out the next great actor or artist or singer or musician. Mm -hmm. It's because Arts builds confidence in people. The confidence to try things, um, you know, that you might not have thought about trying. It allows you to fail and feel okay about it because get up again, you, yeah, yeah, try again. You created it, um, <laughs> and, and that's just something that's lost. Mm -hmm. And and in many of the things that that are taught in schools, uh, the things that's getting taken away is you know the arts. And we try to do what we can to keep it in there because of the confidence and the creativity and the other things that, that instills within kids that, uh, that we don't want to see lost. Wonderful, thank you. So for all three of you, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Crystal, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, so at the Utah Cultural Alliance, we have a really exciting project right now that we have been letting the community know about. And this will actually be the first time we'll be letting the non-cultural community oh. know about this. but. We have created a cultural asset map. So this map allows organizations, uh, creative individuals, businesses, cultural businesses, um, architecture firms, historical markers, libraries, all things that fall in that venue of culture to be listed on our map. Cool. We see this map as a wonderful tool for governments, for tourism bureaus, for businesses to really see what's exciting and in their community. We also hope that when people go on road trips around our beautiful state, they won't just check out the wonderful scenery, but they'll also take a look at this map and say, hey, maybe I'll check out this little gallery in Escalante, or maybe mm -hmm. I'll check out this new museum I've never been to before. Or something wow, like that, that sounds so we're awesome. very excited. Wonderful. Sophia? So, <clears throat> I'd like to point out uh, that May, uh, Midville is an incredibly diverse area, and it's True. very inclusive. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that arts in general do they allow you to explore diversity, to appreciate, to understand and accept it. Um, and, you know, it also in that case helps you build a more inclusive environment uh, and family. So there are certain levels of your formal education. They, they can affect certain areas of your brain, your analytic parts of your brain. But your analytic parts of your brain work better when you're creative empathetic parts of your brain are also functioning at high levels mm -hmm. and the best way to get to those levels is via the arts. I agree. Oh. Uh, both of these have been great so you know, like <laughs> really add, all I can really add is go out and support arts. I mean no, what's funny is you're watching a show you're being entertained almost very rarely, especially in a community involvement, is any actor getting any money out of what they're right? doing. Right? Um, <laughs> or the people producing it. Um, I have made uh, theater my, my hobby for years and years, uh -huh. which means I don't make money off of it. But the only thing that they're really getting is the applause, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, you know, the ability to perform. So please go out and support everything you can. Uh, not just the stuff you normally think you might like, but try and support everything. Thank Love you, it. Bob. And thank you to our fantastic panel today. And thank you, audience, for once again viewing another edition of Lyrical Logs. Logs. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Right. And you can just start. So tell us what's going on. It's like. I love that. Well, I just left my husband for this really cute soldier. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just murdered my boyfriend. I just murdered my boyfriend. That's actually the end of the show. <laughs> Like, this is one of the few offers that Verity did yeah, have about or, 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 or about to say, if that man does not leave me alone, I swear to God, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> one of the best things I ever did was stab Scarpia. I'm like, I can't wait. I'm just like, let me do it over and over again. And I don't know why, but like, like this is... That scene's so great. Right, with like...